What up? What up? What up? Welcome back into another edition of First Strike. We got an opportunity here to go out to Abu Dhabi UFC fight night. Going to be an early card. Starts at 12 p.m. Eastern out there in the UAE. And we're going to talk to you guys about the Sandhagen Nirmaga Medoff card. We got the Apex Predators of the Octagon here and MMA Jeff and Subhuman Gaucho ready to get into it. And First Strike has been running hot. If you're new here, you know this is what we do here. We're rocking. We got three sweeps in our last four weeks, 12 and two, as we get rolling over our last 14 picks. Last week was nothing short of spectacular. The crew beat the line in all fronts out there. Jeff with a big winner on Little Robocop at plus 121. We had our guy Subhuman Gaucho takes Aspinall, not just once, but he gives you a double dipper. He gets the KO at even money. He gets the round one KO at plus 200. And then Bukaskis and the over two and a half at plus 165. Not only do we beat the line, not only do we look at the decision prop at plus 150, that fight ended in the end of the third round. If you took that decision at plus 150, you didn't cash. That was good enough for a plus 5.86 units last week. And we cannot wait to get into it tonight. Sub, how are we feeling about the card? God, man, I love this card. Um, I say that every week, but uh, this one especially, you know, these Abu Dhabi cards, they're good money. They're good money. They're good fighters. They always put on a show. They pay the money. And they get the fights. So, uh, yeah, I love this, man. I love this. How are you feeling about, about this one, Jeff? I'm feeling good about it as well. I'm pretty excited about this one. As you had mentioned, the Abu Dhabi fights are always always seem to uh, bring the action-packed fights. And uh, I don't know if I'm excited about the 12 p.m. start, but I am excited about the card. <laughs> Going to be early. The nice thing about 12 p.m. is we're done by around 6 p.m., which means we get ourselves a nice little Saturday to count that cash after the big live stream event. And I know we were talking backstage. Should be plenty of dog opportunities to get paid this weekend. But let's do what we're here to do. Let's get down to it. It's time to bring the fight to the bookies. And uh, let's open the card up here. I know Jeff's excited about this first fight that we're going to talk about here. And uh, he's looking at none other than a heavyweight battle. Number 19 with a nice 12 and 1 record, trying to come back from his recent loss to Gasayev. Big KO just four months ago, but we've got Dante on the other side. Number 24. Jeff, I guess the big question is is this a quick turnaround fighting just two months before, or is this kind of one of those fighters that we're seeing? Likes to go out there three times a year, loves to be in the gym and try to fight. Talk to us about how we're getting paid. This big first fight that we've got in front of us here. The floor is yours. We got Yes, I have. And we've got Dante Mays. Talk to us about how we get this cash. You know, are these heavyweights going to end up going the distance? It seems like uh, I mentioned it last Saturday. Uh, the last few fights or the last few years, it seems like the heavyweights are tending to go the over and get to the judges' decisions. But um, I don't know. We'll see. Mays, he's been doing a lot of wrestling in his last few fights as well. He's been working on his uh, grappling against the cage, looking for a takedown. Uh, if he typically gets a takedown and ends up on top, he's probably going to ground and pound you to, to a finish. Um, Gaziev, on the other hand, he needs to keep this one on the feet and show his power, powerful striking early and often, as he typically does. Um, if he stuffs Mays on a couple of different takedowns, though, I think Mays is going to find himself into some trouble. Um, if this one does get to a lot of kin clinching uh, against the fence, um, Gaziev has a tendency to gas later in the fights because he does tend to uh, start out heavy and often in the uh, in the first round. Both fighters have a lot of power on their strikes, whether it's kicks or punches. So this is going to be a pretty exciting one. Both uh, Between the two of the fighters, there's a total of 12 KOs in their professional career, um, which led me to rolling on the fight ends by KO at minus 115. So either fighter to knock the other one out, minus 115. Well, I like where your head is at in this one, Jeff. Um... You know, I, I wanted Shamil early. That was kind of where my head was at. I think he does knock him out. Dante Mays, weirdly durable fighter. He can kind of fight through it sometimes. But uh, Shamil, on the other hand, he cannot, you know, he, he doesn't have a gas tank. And um, I, I think if he doesn't get it done early, he's likely going to get cooked late. 
I, I like uh, I like that I like that look. I think it's a All good. Right. Um, so let's let's move on. We've got Mike with uh, a fight that, gosh, um, if I wasn't betting my wager on uh, on this money line, this would be the next one that I would bet. Um, I like where his head's at. This is going to be a fun fight. But um, I, I have a clear side. I think uh, Mike is on the same side. Mike, tell us where you're at. Big battle, and this one's moved up to the main card. I think it's at the main card for a reason here. And here we go again. Taking a women's battle. I'm going to put my 5-0 and o record here on first strike on the line as we look at Mackenzie Dern and Lupe Godinez to figure this one and uh, try to get some nice money. We've beaten the line and just about every week we've gone out here to perform and this is kind of a unique one because early we saw loopy open up as a slight favorite tons of steam coming in right now on mackenzie dern and she has now moved to a nice minus 130 dog i'll be now we're starting to see ping pong the early betters tend to be the sharper betters out there they're betting the numbers when it comes to ufc not so much the fighters and looking at some of the uh the pedigree that's within so we'll talk a little bit about that but as far as this is concerned now, uh, we're starting to see a little bit of buyback on Loopy, and I think it makes sense. We look at Mackenzie Dern by the numbers here, one and three her last four fights. You know, she's been trying to figure this thing out. She came out of a regional circuit, got herself some LFA time, but she's one and three in her last four fights. And uh, look, as far as how this fight breaks down, much like most of the fights between the two of these, uh, surprisingly, submission ladies. 54% of Mackenzie Dern's fights have been won by submission. Six and four in decisions, though, over her UFC career, uh, over her MMA career. Only eight and five in the UFC. Loopy on the other side, three and oh, dis, uh, submissions. Nine and four by decision. Seven and four in the UFC. So this definitely is a coin flip type of fight. I got to go back to recent performance, just specifically the last two fights as we look at Mackenzie Dern, uh, definitely struggling. You know, she's been knocked down several times. She likes to fight off her back as well. So maybe it's not that she likes to do it, but when she's suffering five takedowns in her last two fights, what's she going to do? She's got no choice but to go out there and try to battle. On the other side of things, Loopy, only one knockdown in her last 11 UFC appearances. Very much a grappler. I think what happens in this battle here is it's going to be sloppy. You know, uh, as much as both these fighters and ladies fights tend to go the distance, we might actually see a little bit of a separation here. We might see a little loopy action, a sloppy kind of fight fest out there, striking fest that ends up on the ground. And in this case here, I do like the advantage going to loopy. I think, again, plucked out there, the pedigree for the UFC. We're now catching plus 110 over at BetMGM to take a little loopy action. And uh, for me, I think this line actually will continue to get wider before the fight stakes, uh, starts off there. And um, I love the plus one that I took it now. I'm going to look to double back around as we get closer to fight. I don't know that this is the women's goes the distance type of battle, but I do want me some loopy. I got her at plus 110. And uh, that's to be, I think, the best angle for us to get to the window now, given that it's Wednesday and it's just a couple of days before big fight night. I, yeah, I, I want to say just a couple words here. Um, you know, I, I want Loopy here. I, I, I just bet Loopy uh, earlier this evening. I don't think she does dumb things in this fight. I, I She has the better wrestling. She can stuff takedowns, and she has the better striking. She can just throw one-twos down the pipe. I think that's her, her method of victory here is just to, you know, cruise to a decision, two, maybe three rounds. I think it's unanimous. I think it's Loopy. And if she's smart, this is going to be a this is going to be a big value play here, uh, Jeff. Any words here? No, I like the uh, I like the take on it. I'm probably going to jump on Loopy um, sooner than later because the line does, as Mike had mentioned, seem to be uh, seem to be uh, going the other way. So, anyways, Sub's going to bring us back to the prelims. Sam Hughes ranked number 33 versus Victoria Dudakova ranked 34. This should be an exciting one. Sub, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think this one will be super exciting. Um, I think this one could end up, you know, kind of sloppy. And that's why I, I do like the dog here. Victoria Dudakova, good one-twos down the pipe. I mean, she's an underrated striker in some ways. She is a good grappler. Um, 
she's uh she's got problems with making bad decisions and she's never fought anybody. Sam Page is gonna bring this fight out of her. She's gonna make this a dog fight. I I think that there's a good possibility Sam could lose the first round, but I think she wins two out of three rounds. You know, one of the things that uh that really got me on Sam here, you know, if you look at the uh the spread on this, you know, plus three and a half on uh, Sam Hughes, meaning if she wins one judge's scorecard, that's like plus 350 last I looked. So they, they think that the uh, the chances that Sam wins one round is better than 75%. I think she she's going to go out there and win two rounds. I think she might even get her out of there late. I like Sam here a lot. She's a dog. Victoria Dudikova has never fought anybody like this. Um, the last person she fought was Jenny Fry, who was an atom weight, and she still had trouble. Sam Hughes for me all day, plus 142. This should be no better than a pick em on the Dudikova side, and, and that's being generous, in my opinion. Lots of great stuff there. We cannot wait to take this thing live with you guys on Saturday. Here you heard it first. Coming off big weekend, trying to run it back. All dog prices again for you guys to get paid here. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. Can't wait to get you guys action on Saturday, 12 p.m. start. Make sure you follow the fellas, MMA Jeff 19 and Subhuman Gaucho on X. And you know we'll be seeing you guys on Saturday. Make sure you comment to the video. Tell us your favorite fights. Tell us which ones you think are going to be the knockdown dragouts. Which ones are you most excited about? And we'll see everybody back here on Saturday. Appreciate you guys. Thank <laughs> you.